In the last stream, we were working on finally making some progress through the new reality quest line here. Initially, getting ourselves a blood altar, which allowed us to make our first sets of andesite alloy. And after that, that allowed us to break in to create. And over here, we have managed to set up a very basic create system. Over here, we have our mechanical mixer, our mechanical press, and our deployer. Currently, they are all being powered by these hand cranks. Uh, hopefully, at some point in the near future, we will uh, replace that and we'll get a fully functioning automatic rotational energy generation system from Create up and running. But I think for today's episode, I kind of want to take a bit of a sidestep away from the main quest line. And I want to look at something that we talked about right at the start of the series, and that is cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is our in-game currency here, and with it, we can purchase a lot of the items in the game's eShop. Specifically, there are a few things that we definitely want here. I would love to get the Angel Ring. That's going to give us creative flight. I would love to get a sophisticated bank pack. While we can make these, buying them is going to be so much easier. Uh, going forward, getting more Ender Chests and Ender Tanks, also super nice. Even more importantly to us, getting things like Wither Skeleton Skulls, Gas Tears, and Wither Skeleton Spawn Eggs, is going to be super useful as well. And as we mentioned right at the start of the pack, you can actually craft cryptocurrency. And this is what I kind of want to try and work towards in today's stream. I think that we have what it takes to get to a point where we can begin producing cryptocurrency. Because the actual recipe here is very easy once you have the infrastructure in place. The hard part is getting the assembly controller, getting the assembly platform, the IO unit for import and export, and the assembly laser with the program. Getting this far in Pneumatocraft is the only bit that's tricky. Once you have everything set up, all we have to do is put in one encrypted ingot, and that will be transformed into one cryptocurrency, and one encrypted ingot is made by smelting one encrypted ore, which we can make using Create with the deployer that we have here. All we have to do is deploy four pieces of encrypted matter, which we can get an infinite amount of by right-clicking on the ground, and apply that to a piece of stone. So uh, the way this works, you'll see it says uh, repeat the sequence four times. So you have to get a piece of stone, deploy an encrypted matter onto it, and do that four times. If you do that four times, you will get one encrypted ore, which we can then smelt, and then process through the assembly controller uh, multi-block structure to get cryptocurrency. So again, once we have everything up and running, getting the cryptocurrency should be very easy. The tricky part is getting it going. So in order to get to the point where we can make the assembly controller, we are going to have to go through quite a bit of pneumatic craft, because in order to make the assembly controller, we need compressed iron, which is from pneumatic craft. We'll go ahead and bookmark that. We need a pressurized tube, which is made with more compressed iron. Uh, we need a finished PCB. We'll bookmark that. This is made with transistors, capacitors, and an unassembled PCB, which we make using etching acid in an etching tank. We'll bookmark that. Uh, we need an empty PCB for that. The empty PCB, we uh, do have to run through a UV light box. We'll bookmark that. Uh, but the empty PCB itself, you can make in a pressure chamber with redstone torches, gold nuggets, and plastic sheets. So um, I think this is the first thing that we're going to have to do. We're going to have to make a pressure chamber. And the pressure chamber is a multi-block structure. Uh, it's a 3 by 3 by 3 that is made up of pressure chamber wall, pressure chamber valves, optionally a pressure chamber interface, and pressure chamber glass. So I'll bookmark all four of those. And these all share a very similar recipe. The pressure chamber wall is made using reinforced bricks, and the reinforced bricks are made from reinforced stone. The reinforced stone is made from stone and compressed iron ingots. So the compressed iron ingot is kind of at the core of pneumatic craft. It's one of the core resources that we're going to need. And the easy way to make it, or the efficient way to make it, I should say, going forward, is going to be in the pressure chamber, where we can turn one iron ingot into one compressed steel if we apply enough pressure to the pressure chamber. Unfortunately, we currently don't have a pressure chamber, so the other way that we can apply pressure to the iron ingot is by blowing it up. So if we throw some iron ingots on the ground and we blow them up with TNT, we have a chance of getting compressed iron. Now you'll see here, it says that the average material loss rate is 20%, which means that we should get about 80% of the iron that we put down back in the form of compressed iron. So approximately every eight out of 10 iron ingots that we throw down will get turned into compressed iron. The other two out of 10 will just be deleted. 
Now, the only thing we don't have here is TNT, which is four sand and five gunpowder. Sand we have, and of course we can make more with the silicon dioxide. Gunpowder, we should, I think, be able to make fairly easily. It needs sulfur, which we have, potassium nitrate, which we don't have, but I think we can get from nitre, which we might have. We do, we've got some of this from our quarry in the mining dimension, and then we need graphite, which again is just carbon. So I actually think that making uh, four or five gunpowder here really shouldn't be all that difficult. Uh, I'm assuming as well that we probably can break down a regular old sulfur crystal into more sulfur element. We totally can, makes sense. Let's break down some of that nitre there. That's gonna get us the potassium and nitrate. Uh, let's quickly go ahead and check if we have any graphite real quick. We don't. We need uh, 10 graphite, which is uh, 40 carbon. Right now we've got 31. I think the easiest way for us to get a bit more carbon is just going to be to break a little bit of coal down. That actually just gets us straight graphite. That is fantastic. I did not know that. Uh, that's fine. And so in fact, boom, look at that. We have the gunpowder. Fantastic. So with that, we should be able to craft up our first piece of TNT. I'll also go ahead and just craft up a regular old uh, Minecraft button here. Actually, never mind. We have one in the system ready to go. And then we are going to have to decide how much iron we're going to try and convert into compressed iron here, because we could try to just get enough compressed iron to make the pressure chamber. And then once we have the pressure chamber, we could use the pressure chamber to make more compressed iron. That might be the better way of going about it, because I don't think we actually need that much compressed iron to get the, uh, the multi-block going. So we would need 16 reinforced bricks, which is uh, 16 reinforced stone, which is two compressed iron there. And then we don't have to use the um, pressure chamber glass, but I feel like we might as well. It looks a little bit nicer and it's easier to see what we're doing. Uh, we do have to get a pressure chamber valve as well, but that's just made of more pressure chamber walls. So I think what we'll do here is we'll maybe do 16. That should be way more than we're gonna need. And there we go, look at that, we got 13 compressed iron. Nice, I will go ahead and fill in the hole that we've just made in the floor. So now we should be able to do something like this and then craft these into bricks and then craft those bricks into pressure chamber wall. Nice. So the default outline for this multi-block looks something like this. We're gonna have a three by three base. Then we're gonna build the rest of the cube out. I'm gonna choose to put glass in the sides here. Uh, we do need to have at least one pressure chamber valve, which does require one of these uh, pressure tubes, which thankfully are very easy to make. And boom, we don't need uh, four of these, but that's fine. We can put one down like that. And then we should be able to fairly easily, I think, uh, craft up four pressure chamber glass, which we can put here, here, and this should form the multi-block. Nice. So this is our pressure chamber. And the way that most things work in Pneumaticraft, instead of requiring redstone flux, they require pressure. So pressure is kind of the way that uh, machines and multi-blocks from Pneumaticraft are powered. Uh, for example, if we wanted to make some compressed iron ingots, we have to have at least two bars of pressure to transform that iron ingot into a compressed iron. Now, the early game, an easy way of generating pressure is via the air compressor, this guy right here. This machine is used to generate compressed air. To do this, insert any solid fuel item that can burn into a furnace in the fuel slot. Uh, it says, note, fuel buckets will not work. Use a liquid compressor for burning liquid fuels. Thankfully, we're not planning to burn liquid fuels. We do need some more reinforced bricks for this. Again, that should not be a problem. We can do another batch like, like so, and I'll make two batches just in case and we'll craft those like that. I think it does need to be, again, in brick form. And boom, there is our air compressor. We actually have what it takes to make another one should we want to. And now uh, we can, if we want, use a pressurizing tube. Uh, we could put this right here and that would work. Uh, you can also use the tube if you wanted to power multiple things to do something like this. And that will just connect up and across. But now if we put any kind of fuel and I'm going to stick to oak for now because we have basically an infinite amount of that coming in via our bonsai pot, like so, we will see that slowly but surely, the uh, pressure in here starts to go up. And it's not particularly fast, but it is going to get there. Now, 
Uh, what we want to do currently is if we want to make some more of the compressed iron, we should grab some more iron from the system. Let's say we go ahead and grab 32. We can then, and this is where it's a little janky because you can try and use the, um, the pressure chamber interface to put items in without breaking this multi-block open. But what you can also do is uh, you can go ahead and drop your items just directly in here. So if you drop in half a stack of iron and then close this back up, we'll see the iron is just sat in there like so. And what should happen here is once the pressure gets up to, uh, to two, we should then see that iron in the chamber get converted into compressed iron. Uh, now we can make this faster if we get another air compressor and we put this down like so. We can then connect that up to the pre-existing line and we can put some fuel into here as well. Going forward, there are also speed upgrades that we can make that we can put into basically any machine from Pneumatic Craft to make it faster at what it does. In the case of the air compressor, it would just burn the, uh, the fuel even faster than it normally does. Okay, so a minute or two later, and I've put down an extra air compressor here, but we're almost at two bars. And look at that. As soon as we get there, we hear a little bit of popping. And now we are going to lose some pressure here. But if we uh, if we break back in, we can uh, quickly acquire our compressed steel. And if we quickly close it back up, you'll see that we're still kind of at around two bars there, which is fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and take out the fuel here, because if you do leave the fuel in and the pressure gets up to this red zone, things start to go bad. Things will start to blow up. Your pipes will start to explode, uh, potentially your machines as well. It's uh, it's not a great time, so I would not recommend letting things get that bad. But we do now have a way of getting a guaranteed one-to-one -one iron to compressed iron ratio. So now we need to start looking at getting these PCBs. So uh, this is where we need these empty PCBs. Now, um, we need these uh, finished PCBs. If we look at the recipe for cryptocurrency, we need one assembly controller, we'll bookmark it, one assembly platform, one assembly IO unit for exporting, one for importing, and one for the assembly laser. And if we look through these, the assembly controller requires three finished PCBs. Then we need one more for this, that's four. Another one is five, another one is six, and another one is seven. So I think in total, we only need seven PCBs. So if we're gonna get seven finished PCBs, that means that we need seven empty PCBs which uh, you make these in sets of three, so I guess we'll make nine, which is uh, six redstone torches, nine gold nuggets, and three plastic sheets. The only thing we don't have access to here is the plastic sheets. Thankfully, uh, you can craft the industrial foregoing plastic directly into plastic sheets from New Craft. You can just convert these back and forth, and the plastic from industrial foregoing actually has a recipe in the compactor. This one is made using uh, polyvinyl chloride, which sounds uh, complicated, but is made in the combiner with carbon, hydrogen, and chlorine. Carbon and hydrogen are base elements. We have a ton of those. And then the chlorine, we can actually get from nickel chloride, which we get from cactus. We got it right at the start of the, uh, the series. We actually have 138 green dye available to us. And so all we should have to do here is drop in our green dye, that's going to get us a ton of nickel chloride. Uh, we do need a lot of plastic, by the way. You'll notice all of these recipes uh, require these like pneumatic cylinders. These require a lot of plastic. There are also a few recipes like the assembly platform that also just require plastic in and of themselves. So let's go ahead and grab some of our hydrogen. And I completely forgot, actually, that we do have uh, carbon and hydrogen over here. We've got 2048 hydrogen, which is fantastic. Again, I think the easiest way for us to get uh, carbon here is going to be... We have some chitin. I feel like we're going to need that... Later on, I remember seeing a recipe that required chitin, but um, we actually probably do have a few elements lying around. We've got some carbon dioxide. We could break down that to get some carbon. But again, I think the easiest way forward is going to be to just break down a little bit of coal here. The coal gets us the graphite, and the graphite we could, of course, break down again into, uh, into carbon directly. We do need to break down that nickel chloride into uh, nickel and chlorine because it's the chlorine itself that we need. And once we have all those, we can bring all of that together into this uh, polyvinyl chloride. 64 should be enough for now. We're definitely going to need more of that going forward. As you saw, there are quite a few recipes here that do require uh, the plastic, but for the time being, we can take seven plastic, craft that into plastic sheets, and that is gonna be more than enough to get us our, uh, our empty PCBs here. So uh, we only needed three for the time being. Let's grab nine golden nuggets, along with six redstone torches.
And just like with the compressed iron here, all we need to do is drop all three of these. Uh, again, we don't need this many plastic. We only need to drop uh, three plastic in. And this time we need just 1.5 bars. It's actually less pressure than was required previously. We do have the 2.3 bars in here, but again, we are going to lose some when we open this up. Plastic, redstone torches, and gold nuggets. There we go. Let me put that back on. Boom, boom. Uh, the fact that we're already at 1.5 pressure means that those are instantly transformed into the PCBs, so we can take those out and again try and retain as much pressure as possible. So now we have an empty PCB, and you'll see that currently it has an etch success chance of 0%. Basically, the way that we go forward here is we have to put our empty PCB into the etching tank with some etching acid, and that's going to etch it into this guy, the unassembled PCB. However, there's a percentage chance that this works, and the percentage chance that it works is shown on the PCB. It starts at zero, but you can increase the percentage chance by putting that empty PCB into a UV light box. Now, the UV light box right here is a little tricky in that it requires three redstone lamps, one pressurized tube, four compressed iron, but then most importantly, the blue PCB blueprint. The PCB blueprint here doesn't have a recipe other than the Amadron template and trading with a villager. However, the creator of the pack has been very kind in that we can buy this PCB for eight cryptocurrency from the store, which I think is going to be worth the investment here. It takes uh, cryptocurrency to make cryptocurrency. So now we should be able to craft up our first UV light box just as soon as we craft up some lanterns here, or just as soon as we craft up some redstone lamps here. We currently actually don't have any glowstone. Now, there probably is a way that we can make glowstone with chemistry. However, I do also assume that we're probably going to be able uh, to get some glowstone very easily from the nether. All right, so not too long later, uh, we didn't have any glowstone around our portal in the nether. And so uh, we grabbed our nature's compass here and uh, we searched for uh, this biome that we're currently in, which is the glowstone gardens biome. And uh, this has quite a bit of glowstone up on the roof. And now that we have just over two stacks of glowstone, we should be able to head on back through to our main base here, to the simulated overworld. And that should be everything that we need if we craft up uh, one, two, three glowstone blocks for us to make three redstone lamps. We might not have enough redstone. We totally do. It looks like our builder has been doing a bit of work between streams. Uh, which is good because it means we no longer have like three redstone left, but we do have everything we need for our first UV light box. Now, the trouble with the UV light box is that it is... Oh, and my pickaxe is broken here. However, we do have a cobalt repair kit ready to go. Fantastic. Uh, does this... It does. I don't know why I thought that might not reduce the pressure. <laughs> The trouble with the UV light box, though, is that it is pretty slow. So we can take one empty PCB and we can put it in. And if the pressure is high enough, which it currently is, uh, it is going to start slowly but surely increasing the etch chance of the PCB, which means that when we drop it in the etching acid, what is the chance that it succeeds? Uh, there is a chance, if you don't get it up to 100%, that the, uh, the PCB will turn into a broken PCB, this one right here, a failed PCB. So ideally, we want to get our etch chance basically up to a hundred percent but as you can see here it's not particularly fast we might have to put some more uh, fuel in here as well to uh, to make sure that our pressure does stabilize because of course the uh, the pressure does kind of slowly decrease uh, while the machines are, are being used and uh, we could if we wanted to make another uv light box to make this faster that would involve spending another uh, eight cryptocurrency on the pcb blueprint the only trouble there is that in order for this to actually work, we need this thing right here. We need the assembly program for lasers. So uh, this is also not craftable. You need the uh, Amadron tablet uh, with eight emeralds, which you don't have. Um, alternatively, much like with the PCB here, you can buy it in the shop, which I think is what we're going to do. That's another eight cryptocurrency. So let me quickly grab that eight cryptocurrency. Again, it takes cryptocurrency to make cryptocurrency. You'll love to see it. I'll put that in the system for now. Uh, we do have enough cryptocurrency left to where if we wanted to, we could make another UV light box. But at the same time, we do have a few other things that we need to do whilst we're waiting 
on uh, on this PCB here. Specifically, we do need to make the uh, the etching tank, which doesn't look too difficult. Um, it requires uh, just a regular old glass pane, a small fluid tank, which again looks very doable, along with some reinforced brick walls, very doable and some reinforced brick slabs, which again, shouldn't be uh, too difficult whatsoever. We are gonna have to make some more reinforced brick, but we do have the compressed iron and the means to compress that iron further into reinforced bricks, boom, and boom. So now the only thing missing is a glass pan. Do we have the glass? We totally do, fantastic. We'll craft that up. And that should be the etching tank done. Nice. I am pretty sure this does again require uh, oh, it doesn't actually. I thought it might have required some uh, some pressure, but it does not. That is good to know. Oh, of course, this thing requires heat to make it go faster. So uh, we'll put this down like uh, over here for now. And we can put our PCBs into here after they've been uh, exposed to uh, the, the UV light over in the UV light box. But uh, we can put those in and then those are going to get transformed into finished PCBs. But they do, re oh, sorry, into unassembled PCBs, but they do require etching acid. The etching acid we have to make in bucket form, and we make it by putting a bucket with two gunpowder, two rotten flesh, and two spider eyes into the pressure chamber. So the gunpowder we made earlier, that's easy enough. And in fact, actually, we do need not just a bucket. It needs to be a bucket of molten plastic, which should be fine because we can just melt down the plastic that we have into molten plastic. That does mean that it's going to need 10 buckets worth, uh, or 10 plastic to make one bucket of molten plastic and that gets us one bucket of etching acid but i am fairly certain that one bucket of etching acid is probably enough to get us the seven finished pcbs that we need so this really shouldn't be too difficult the gunpowder we've made before and we can make again in fact we probably have two gunpowder we do rotten flesh we might have we do not however again i'm fairly certain that that's just protein and protein it is just protein which we can get from breaking down at string which we can get more of if needs be using silkworms in trees. We break the leaves and we get some more uh, more string from that. So uh, let's go ahead and break down the string. That's going to get us this uh, keratin, and that keratin then breaks down, and one of the things we get from it is protein. We then do also need the spider eye, but again, the spider eye is simply made with chitin and beta-creatine. That's where I saw the chitin from. We had some earlier. We got it from... The, uh, the warped warp block, I think, in the last episode, or potentially even the nether warp block might have been where we got it from. But uh, chitin we have, and then the beta creatine is, again, easy enough to make. It's just hydrogen and carbon, both of which we have. So the beta carotene and the chitin shouldn't be too difficult. So I don't think, actually, chat, any of this is going to be too bad. The only thing that could be slightly tricky is getting all the plastic. But again, we've already made four today. We just need to get uh, six more. That's going to get us... Uh, everything we need to get a bucket worth of molten plastic. And really all we have to do is drop the plastic in here. And then I believe that we should be able to put an empty bucket on the casting table. We can then pull the uh, molten plastic out over that bucket. And that should just give us a bucket of, yeah, like this. And that should just give us a bucket of molten plastic, uh, at which point we should be able to combine all of that up in our pressure chamber. And that's going to get us the etching acid, which we can then use to transform our empty PCBs into unassembled PCBs at which point, if we're going to make seven finished PCBs, we're going to need 14 transistors and 14 capacitors. Thankfully, uh, both of these are just made in the pressure chamber. But again, uh, if we need 14 transistors and 14 capacitors, that means that we need uh, 28 more plastic sheets to make that work, um, along with um, some golden nuggets, some redstone, and some slime balls. Again, none of that should be too bad. The slime we can make using protein and sucrose, both of which we have. Uh, the golden nuggets we already have as well. So we basically need a lot of plastic here. We need 28 for the transistors and capacitors, plus an extra 10 for the bucket. That's 38. Plus, we need a few more for the um, the different parts of the multi-block structure that we're going to make over here, including like these uh, pneumatic cylinders. So I think we're going to have to make over a stack of, uh, of plastic here. All right, so quite a lot, way too much, in fact. Chemistry later, and we have 100 plastic. Uh, we can craft that into the plastic from Pneumaticraft, which is what we're going to need. Our first PCB has hit 100%, so now this is guaranteed to uh, succeed in the etching tank, and the next one is on its way, slowly but surely. Uh, it's at 50% right now. I didn't swap these out as quickly as I should have done. It didn't take 
that long to get to 100%. Um, I just didn't swap it out. So um, I'm going to try and be more diligent about swapping that out when it gets to 100%. So we can hopefully get those seven uh, fairly quickly. But uh, now what we should be able to do is we should be able to go ahead and drop 10 plastic over in here. That's going to melt down. Uh, then we can pull that out over a bucket. We do have some iron lying around. One, two, three. Let's go ahead and drop that bucket down right about there. While we wait for that to melt down over here, we should be able to make the slime balls that we're going to need for our transistors. We need uh, 14 of these, which we have we've got 16. Fantastic. And as we saw before, if we're going to make the etching acid here, we also need uh, two gunpowder, which we have two rotten flesh and two spider eyes. So the rotten flesh is just protein, which we do not have. But again, we can get from string. We just used the last of our protein on making that um, the slime balls. I will clear my inventory out a little bit here. Um, I did make our first draw upgrade here for oxygen. So I've put in this uh, tier three draw upgrade. Uh, the draw upgrades from storage drawers are super easy. Uh, there are a few of them. They start out at uh, tier one, which is made with obsidian. This increases the amount that a draw can hold by two times the base value. So it would take it from 2048 up to 4096. And then it goes up from there. The tier three can increase the base value by four times, then by eight times, 16 times, and 32 times. And this now massively increases the amount of oxygen that we can hold because uh, in order to make the plastic, we needed carbon and hydrogen. But uh, when we were breaking down the cellulose, which we got from the wood here, uh, we got oxygen as a byproduct. So I was taking the, the wood, breaking that down to cellulose. That got us the carbon and hydrogen that we needed for the plastic, but it gave us a byproduct of oxygen. So we now have uh, over 3,000 oxygen uh, and we needed a space to put it in. And this straw can only hold 2,048 by default. Either way, uh, let us have a look here. We have the protein. Let's see about getting some rotten flesh. There we go. We only need two, but four is fine. And then finally, we also need the spider eyes, which is where we needed the uh, chitin. Uh, and we also needed the beta carotene. So the beta carotene, uh, you can get from carrots, which is fun, but uh, we don't have any carrots. So once again, we are going to have to use uh, carbon and hydrogen. Thankfully, uh, we do have, I think, some carbon and some hydrogen lying around. And even if we didn't, uh, we do have like the starch here that breaks down again into uh, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It's all the same. And we also have, of course, even more cellulose and a ton of wood should we need it in the future but uh, let's see here beta carotene can we make that we can each spider eye requires two beta carotene and two chitin so we are going to need uh, four beta carotene here again thankfully we do have the hydrogen and the um carbon to make that happen it's just a case of putting it in the right slot here unfortunately sometimes when you shift click in it will put the hydrogen in the wrong slot, which is uh, not ideal. And you can't lock the recipe. Uh, you can lock the recipe, but it doesn't uh, It doesn't do anything. Like if I shift click in the hydrogen, uh, it's still sometimes if you try shift click too much in, going to go in the wrong slot, which is, uh, which is not ideal. Uh, but there is our fourth uh, beta carotene. And so now uh, let's grab the chitin that we got earlier. We've got loads of the stuff. And uh, again, we need four of that. We can combine both of those up for a spider eye. Nice. So that should be basically everything. Let's go pull the plastic out over the bucket here make sure the plastic is at the bottom pull that out over the bucket and that's going to get us our first bucket of molten plastic you'll love to see it and so if we combine the uh, two rotten flesh with our two gunpowder that we made earlier and the two spider eyes and the molten plastic bucket we should be good to get our first bucket of etching acid which as i mentioned earlier i think should be enough to uh, to get us everything we're going to need today so boom 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 I'm not quite sure how much pressure we need for this etching acid we need one bar so not much pressure at all uh, i assume that we just need to put a little bit more fuel into our air compressors we're currently at 0.84 bars uh, it does tell you in the top left there but uh, if we just do something like this and maybe like this over here this guy is almost there he's at 72 percent, but he's also not quite over the line so he's not actually doing anything momentarily filling those up is going to get this back on track and as before as soon as that gets over one bar of pressure boom we get our first etching acid bucket so let's grab this let's fill that back in to stop that horrible sound and then over here we can put the etching liquid in and now if we take our 100 etch success pcb and we place that 
into the etching tank, that is going to slowly but surely etch into a unassembled PCB, not a finished PCB. We still need to make the transistors and the capacitors, but that's going to get, uh, but that's going to transform into an unassembled PCB. And I think it uses about a hundred millibuckets worth of etching acid to do it. Now, unlike the other machines where you can put speed upgrades in, this machine's speed works based off its temperature. Right now it's at 24 degrees Celsius, about room temperature, and its etching time is 150 seconds, so about three minutes. Now we can increase that by increasing the temperature of the machine. And one real easy way to do that is just by putting lava next to the machine. So if we go steal a bucket of lava from our lava tank and we drop that down underneath the etching machine, again, you could put this on any side, but underneath is of course the easiest, that's gonna go ahead and skyrocket the temperature of the etching tank. And you'll see that as it does, the etching time actually comes down quite substantially to the point where we're almost at half the time. It's at 85 seconds here. Uh, 75 seconds, of course, would be uh, twice as fast, but it's actually getting there. So it takes just over a minute now uh, to turn one empty PCB into the uh, unassembled PCB. I keep forgetting the name of, uh, of this part here. I keep thinking of finished PCB, but uh, this is actually almost done. And in fact, this is not really the bottleneck. The, uh, the bottleneck, of course, is our uh, UV light box here. So um, this will solidify, by the way, over time. The lava uh, won't stay there forever. The lava will get cooled down by the etching tank. There's our unassembled PCB. And so uh, after a little bit of time, I'm not quite sure how much, the lava there will get turned into obsidian and you would have to replace it if you wanted to keep that temperature up. Um, there are other ways to heat these machines up. Uh, for example, the vortex tube is one that you can apply pressure to and that can use that to produce heat uh, that will last you know, forever so long as you have the pressure to keep that heat up. Uh, but for now, the lava, there you go, is, uh, is an easy way of doing that. Uh, for now though, basically all we need to do is do this six more times until we have seven uh, unassembled PCBs, at which point we can then look at crafting them into finished PCBs. I think I am going to go ahead and spend another eight of our cryptocurrency here on purchasing another one of the uh, the blue PCBs so that we can make another light box because the light box is definitely our limiting factor right now. And having a second one of these is gonna make us substantially faster than we currently are. So we can place this like here, uh, you do have to make sure the back is facing towards the pipe in order for it to work, but then we can just drop that in like so. And just like the other one, that's going to slowly but surely start uh, to etch those or start to increase their etching chances. We could try and play it risque, like we could take this one out here at 91%. It's almost certain that that would become a um, an unassembled PCB, right? We've got a 9 out of 10 chance. But at the same time, knowing my look, if I took this out, it would almost certainly not work. Uh, you'll see here that it did only use four millibuckets of, of etching acid here to make that uh, PCB. So you can see that we can make a ton of unassembled PCBs before we need another bucket of etching acid. But uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and uh, and do this until we have uh, until we have seven of these, eh? Chat is recommending here the time in a bottle. This is probably something that we should have made as soon as we had the ability to make it. It's uh, fairly cheap in the grand scheme of things. It's two diamonds, two lapis, three gold ingots, one glass bottle, and one clock. Uh, we're just missing the glass bottle, which we can make, along with a regular old Minecraft clock. And this is a super powerful item, uh, because what it does is it stores time while you're holding it. You'll see here the time here is going up. And then later on, we can use that time to accelerate machines. For example, over here, this uh, UV light box, if I were to right click it with the time in a bottle, shift right click it, uh, what would happen if we had enough time is uh, it would double the speed of that machine. So you can right click once to double the speed, uh, right click again to 4x the speed, then 8x, 16x, 32x, and I think you could even go up to 64x as well. But uh, if you have enough time in here, there we go, you can right click, that took uh, I think 30 seconds off us, and that is going to double the speed of this machine. So basically it's a way to just kind of uh, hold time as long as you're holding it it doesn't have to be in your hotbar or in your hand it can just be in your inventory but so long as we have this on us it's going to slowly but surely start storing up time and we can use that time to speed up other machines going forward which is particularly useful for machines like the uv light box here which take a staggeringly long amount of time all right so way too much uving later we have five unassembled pcbs one empty PCB, which is about to turn into an unassembled PCB, and then the Twitch chat has convinced me to gamble on this last one. This last one is at 89%, but I'm going to throw it in anyway. I'm going to go quickly grab another bucket of lava to make our etching tank just a little bit faster. And I'm really hoping that uh, this last one here 
It's only got an 89% chance to succeed. That's 9 out of 10. But uh, I'm really hoping it doesn't fail because uh, it takes way too long to burn them in the UV tank. Uh, again, you can make them faster with speed upgrades. The trouble with the speed upgrades is that they're a little expensive to make. They require uh, lubricant, like the, uh, the actual liquid lubricant which uh, needs to be made with a thermo-pneumatic processing plant with biodiesel or regular diesel, which you got to make with bio, uh, with ethanol or seed oil. It's, it's a whole thing that's a lot more work than we can do right now. So uh, the first one succeeded because it was guaranteed to. And this is our seventh one. It's got an 89% chance to succeed. If it doesn't, it'll go down here. If it does, it'll end up up here. We do have one more cooking, even though we don't need it. So we do have like one extra chance if this does fail. But I am confident that this is going to succeed and we're going to get our seventh and final unassembled PCB. I've got the slime balls, redstone, plastic sheets, and gold nuggets required to craft up all of the transistors and capacitors. So we should be basically good to go on making the finished PCBs once this is done. And then after that, uh, we did calculate earlier how much plastic we need. And so hopefully uh, the plastic that we have, the 62 here, should be enough to craft up all of the final assembly units. The only thing we might not have enough of is compressed iron, but we should hopefully be able to make enough compressed iron using the iron we have going forward. Look at that, success, you love to see it. Fantastic, all right, so over here, we will do the capacitors first. So we need 14 capacitors, which is 14 plastic, which we have. Uh, we'll get out of the 14, because we're gonna need that in a second anyway. So 14 plastic, along with 14 slime balls, which we have, and 28 gold nuggets. Yes. Okay. So once again, let's break this. Let's do you, you, and you. That's going to basically instantly make our transistors, or our capacitors, sorry. And then for the transistors, we need 14 plastic sheets, 14 redstone, and this time we need uh, 42 gold nuggets, which is exactly what we have. Perfect. And there we go. All right. Um, we will do, real quick, I will get some more, like while we have pressure in here, I am going to go ahead and get, we're running out of iron, but uh, I think that if we do another 32 here, that should do it for us. Again, this does need to have um, at least two bar instead of one, so that is going to have to uh, slowly but surely work its way back up in pressure that is fine we can fill the fuel up over here while we wait for that though we do have everything it takes to craft seven unfinished pcbs or in theory we should have everything it takes to make all of these unfinished pcbs we totally do fantastic and so now it's just a case of actually crafting those up into the parts so the assembly controller easy enough uh, the assembly platform needs these little screwdriver looking things the uh, pneumatic cylinders so we need two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11 of these. You do make them in sets of two, so we're going to have to make 12 of them. And they do require cannon barrels, which need the uh, reinforced brick wall. Okay, so we are going to need some more reinforced brick here. That's fine. That is yet more uh, reinforced iron. And once we have the sixth cannon barrel, we should then be able to make, hopefully, enough of these. So let's do this and two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten and... 12 should be perfect. So we've got the assembly controller. Let's get the assembly platform. It's just missing uh, the PCB, which we have. We also need the export unit, which is just missing a hopper, as is the import unit. And then we also need a specifically red stained glass, which is a very specific uh, request. Our system is full, which is why we're running into problems here. We have got so much stuff. We need to set up... Um, a lot more storage drawers specifically for elements. We also do have a couple of um, elements in here that shouldn't be, like we've got sometimes uh, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen that are hanging out in here when they uh, definitely shouldn't be. But uh, definitely we need more draw space so we can move all of those elements into their own drawers and, uh, and free up space for other stuff. Either way, for now, that should be what we need to make the export unit and also to make the import unit. And then the final piece of the puzzle is the assembly laser, which does require this red stained glass. So we are going to have to get red stained glass. We just need uh, regular glass and red dye. We should have the glass. We do. And then in terms of red dye, uh, I believe we can craft beets down. We totally can. And as would look what have it, we do have a beet farm 
hanging out over here. Let's do this. Uh, for now, I am going to just throw away some of this stuff like these beet seeds and those potatoes because I didn't mean to get those. Either way, let's do one of these. And hopefully one of these. Nice. So that should be everything we need to start with cryptocurrency. So as a proof of concept, we put down the assembly controller. I then think that we need to give all of the uh, other parts of the machine access to the platform. So let's put the imposter here. I don't think it matters whereabouts you put it, like how you put it down, but it just needs to be next to the platform. We'll have the exporter here and then we'll have the laser there. And so I think that should be everything. I think in that scenario, we can then get a chest because I'm pretty sure we can have a chest here. And actually let's get a second chest, one for import and one for export like that. We're going to put that laser program that we purchased earlier from the store into the laser, like so. This does also require pressure. So uh, for now, I'm just going to move one of these over to here. Again, uh, not the most attractive place to put it, but it should work. And so that's going to slowly but surely increase in pressure. If we're wanting to make cryptocurrency, I'm not quite sure of the pressure required here. It doesn't necessarily say but uh, we'll leave that running for a while because that's going to take a little bit of time to heat up. While we wait for that, let's grab some uh, encrypted matter and let's grab some stone. So if we put one stone, let's pull this guy up a bit. If we put a stone here, just one stone for now will do. And if we put all of our encrypted matter up here, we can do one, two, three, four. That gets us the encrypted ore, at which point we can then go ahead and smelt our encrypted ore over here in a fairly fast diamond furnace. That gets us the encrypted ingot. And then if we take that encrypted ingot and put it in the input chest, I think that should potentially start to work. At any time, if the machine's not working, you can click on the problems tab. And uh, as you can see here, the problem that we're currently running into is that uh, we need 3.5 bars of pressure. And so what we'll do here is we'll just quickly move another one of these over like this. And uh, we can drop some fuel into this guy as well. All right, so this is almost up at uh, at 3.5 bar. We're at 3.49, 5.0. And look at that. It is very slow, but <laughs> the machine arm, the input arm, is going to grab the ingot out of here. I did make two more. It's going to move that around over very, very, very slowly into the uh the assembly platform then once the assembly platform once it's done once it's placed it then the laser is going to come over again very slowly we're going to see a laser i think momentarily there it is the laser is going to etch our cryptocurrency and then can i just take this I can't take it. Okay. It does have to be moved by the exporter. Again, once this guy is done, I was hoping I could like intervene, but the uh, the exporting arm then has to grab the cryptocurrency. Oh, that's why you don't want to let the pressure get too high because if it gets too high, it explodes. Thankfully, it didn't break any of our good stuff because this stuff is very expensive to make, um, but that's why you want to keep an eye on the air compressor. Um, but you'll see that slowly but surely that cryptocurrency is being moved over and chat, we have just printed... money there it is okay so a few things here one with the air compressor if you don't want it to ever explode you can install a security upgrade the security upgrade is not perfect but the security upgrade will uh, release some of the pressure if it gets into the red zone so it says adds a built-in safety valve to the machine automatically releases some air if the pressure would rise into the danger zone it's not perfect. If you try and fill this with speed upgrades and then put a bunch of uh, fuel in, uh, it still can explode because you can still kind of overload it. But uh, it is possible to kind of mitigate what just happened there. If we had a security upgrade in, that wouldn't have blown up. It would have. Uh, it was slow enough to where it would have caught it and it would have just released some of the pressure and it would have been fine. Going forward, there's two things we could do here. Um, we could try and make this faster. That would involve getting the lubricant, which is possible. We can do that. Um, alternatively, though, um, we can just automate the line here as well. Like if we get three more deployers. Like right now we're using one deployer um, and deploying four times. But if we get four deployers, what we can do is we can make a, um, a conveyor belt. This one here, the mechanical belt from Create. Do we have enough kelp for that? We totally do. Let me get uh, six dried kelp. If we put 
the belt down underneath it, we can have the stone move along the belt. And if each deployer uh, each deploys one piece of encrypted matter, that will basically automate the production of the encrypted ore. And then, of course, we can automate the, the smelting with the diamond furnace or even uh, with uh, an electric furnace if we do get uh, faster or better power generation up and running. Uh, let me quickly do something like this. That gets us a belt. And then if we get some shaft here, um, what you can do is if we get rid of the deployer, we can have, for example, shaft here. And then if we had one, two, three, four deployers, there may be a gap at the end and a belt here, we can connect the belt from one shaft to the other like that. And then again, just as a proof of concept here, if we get the wrench and uh, steal this guy again, the crank, we can crank this and that's going to move the belt, right? And uh, now the crank only goes one way. Uh, I think actually, if I do it on the other side, does it go the other way? I actually don't know. If I do this, it does. So you see that if we apply rotational energy that goes this way, items will move across. But the deployer would deploy, then the next one, then the next one, the next one. All the deployers would deploy their matter, and we could automate the production, uh, or we could automate the process of turning that uh, stone and encrypted matter into that encrypted ore, and then we could automate the smelting of that encrypted ore into encrypted ingots, and then if we have those encrypted ingots automatically going to the chest here, that would then fully automate the process, right? And at that point, as long as we had fuel going to these air compressors, which we can do automatically with bonsai pots because they just need wood. And as we've seen from our bonsai pot on the generator in the mining dimension, uh, the bonsai pot without any upgrades just produces fuel. So we could just have that go straight into the air compressor. And so long as the air compressor has a security upgrade, which I think is easier to make, it requires four obsidian, four lapis and one safety tube module, which looks actually fairly easy. Let me see if I can't make one of these. The safety tube module is not too bad. And actually, uh, we mm, do not have enough gold. We're very close, but we're also very low on gold, which is not ideal. But chat, we have managed to, to generate cryptocurrency. It is very slow. As I said, though, going forward, if we automate this, which I think is something we might look at doing in the next stream, then we can just leave it running in the background and we're going to generate a ton of cryptocurrency, even without having to worry about speeding it up and making lubricant. If we just leave that running, you know, if we set it up next stream so it's automated and then we leave it running for an entire stream, we're going to come back to a fair amount of cryptocurrency, at which point we can just start buying stuff from the shop, which means we're not going to be too far away from things like Creative Flight, from the Speed Trinket, from being able to buy as many Wither Skeleton Skulls or Gas Tears as we like, getting things like the Backpack, getting enchants by just crafting them. All this kind of stuff will just become free for us to get. Next time, I think we'll come back. Um, we still need to get more power for our base because right now we're still just using generators. Um, but I think we will look potentially, at least initially, at getting a source of create energy up and running. Because right now we're doing everything with cranks, which is not ideal. I think we'll look at getting a good source of create energy up and running. And then we'll look at using that to automate the production of encrypted ore and therefore of cryptocurrency. And if we have time, we'll also potentially look at uh, progressing on with some more machines and maybe getting a, a better source of power. And at some point in the near future as well, we could do with the upgrading our storage situation. Not only do we need more storage drawers to hold all of our elements, again, at some point, potentially we'll try and get the uh, periodic table up and running, but we could also do with upgrading our simple storage network here to something like refined storage or applied energistics. But those are both problems for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.